Hello and welcome to another video on our journey from the primes to the Riemann hypothesis. Today we're going to look again at some of the simple ideas around numbers and primes and dig a little deeper into something we said last time. So last time we proved that the primes are endless and it was quite a simple proof, it's an ancient proof, but there was something in that proof that um, assumed that all numbers can be broken down into a list of primes, prime factors. So we're going to zoom into that a little bit today. Um, and actually, although we've said it's a simple idea, it's a very really important idea called the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. Sounds scary, but it's not really. So let's start again with something very simple, like the number 12 and look at its factors. Remember factors are the things we multiply together to make a product. So here 12 is a product, 2 and 6 are the factors. Now actually there's a different way we can break down that 12. 12 can be broken down into 3 times 4, not just 2 times 6. Hmm, so that's interesting. But if we look at that 6, that can be broken down as well. So before we had 12 equals 2 times 6, now we can say here 12 is 2 times 3 times 2. That was the 6, this thing here. And when we said 12 is 3 times 4, we can break the 4 down even further. We can say 12 is 3 times 4, or 12 is 3 times 2 times 2. Now these can't be broken down any further, they're prime. Now if that went a little bit fast, let's let's break let's do that with a bit of pen and paper. So we said twelve equals six times two. Now can two be broken down any further? No it can't. In fact, it's a prime number. That's the definition. It can't be broken down any further. It's a prime. Six, can that be broken down any further? Yes, it can. Three times two. Now, can two be broken down any further? Nope. Can three? Nope. So we've got 12 is three times two times two and none of these factors can be broken down any further. Now let's just say that again really slowly. These are prime factors because they can't be broken down any further. This one isn't because we can break it down. Now let's look at the other way of breaking down 12. We said it was three times four. Now can three be broken down any further? Nope. Can four? Yep, that's 2 times 2. Now these are primes, they can't be broken down any further. So we've said that 12 equals 3 times 2 times 2. Oh, there's a bit of a coincidence there. That list, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 2, is this list here, 3, 2, 2. Is there something there? Hmm. Let's have a look. So there's our example just listed in order now. 2, 2, 3 in order of size and 2, 2, 3 and they're the same. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is this breakdown into prime numbers? Is it unique? Because that would be rather useful. What that would mean is that each whole number 12, 16, 15, 32, can be broken down into a list of primes, you know, the prime factors, that is unique. A little bit like DNA is unique to people. So when we know a person, the DNA for that person is unique. If we find the DNA, we can identify which person it's from because it's unique to that person. So one identifies the other, and that's a powerful thing to be able to say. 
and it would be really, really useful, really handy if that was true. And actually that is what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, as grand as it sounds, and that's what it says. It simply says that every whole number bigger than one um, can be broken down into prime factors and part two of that, it, that, that list of prime factors is unique to that number. It's almost like it's identifying code, it's DNA, it's barcode in a way. Um, so let's prove that. Um, and it sounds like a difficult thing to do, but it, it's not at all really. Um, now, in this series of videos, our focus is on understanding these proofs intuitively, so we won't be as rigorous as some of the textbooks that you might find on, a, on your bookshelf. You know, that's the proper place for, you know, the most rigorous proofs where everything is done properly. The point of these videos is to give you an intuition to help you understand so that if you're having trouble with those very rigorous formal proofs, you've got the intuition to help you understand those proofs. Right, so what we're going to do is break this proof down into two parts. The first part is to say we want to show that any number can be broken down into a list of factors that are prime, that are all prime. We do that by example, but as we said previously, examples, even if for lots of them, aren't proof. We need um, a more uh, rigorous logic that we can't argue with. Um, and the second thing we're going to do is to show that that list of primes is unique to that number. So we're going to make our job easier by breaking our proof down into two bits. And it matches the the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which is often expressed in these two parts. So let's get cracking. So imagine we have a counting number n, more than one, and write it as a product of factors. Just imagine that they are f1, f2, f3, factor 1, factor 2, factor 3, up to factor n. It doesn't matter what they actually are. You know, it could be 12 is 3 times 4, something like that. Now what we can do is we can look at each factor and try and break it down. If we can't break it down, it's a prime. If we can, because it's not a prime, we have two more numbers or three more numbers that we've broken it down into. And we can rewrite this expression with those, with those factors. Just like we did with that 12, but this time using symbols because we're being more general than a specific example. So that f1 that we had the first factor might be broken down as g1 and g2, perhaps. It might be g1, g2, g3. It might be six factors, it doesn't really matter. The fact is that we are breaking it down to the next level. And the next factor, f2, it might be prime, so we can't break it down. So we've got f1 here, which we, in this example, we've broken down into g1, g2. And f2, let's just imagine that it's prime, so it's p1, it doesn't change. And f3, we might break down into three factors. So if this, imagine that's 12, that could be 3, 2, 2, perhaps. But it could also be that these um, factors, these smaller ones, can be broken down further. So what we can do is we can keep repeating the process, repeatedly breaking down the numbers that we can break down, the factors that we can break down, until they can't be broken down any further. Then they are prime. And that is the definition of prime, which we saw in the very first video. So the logic there is saying that we can keep repeating this process of breaking down these, these factors, these numbers, into smaller factors, and we will always be able to do that. And the only reason we can stop, the only reason we stop when we can't break them down any further, is when they're all prime. So that logic is complete and strong enough to say that we can always do that. And it depends on the very definition of prime, which we saw in the very first video. So I hope that convinces you 
that actually we can break down a number into many factors and we can keep breaking those down until all the factors that we have are prime. Just to illustrate that, let's look at another example. Let's try, I don't know, 24. Let's write that as, I don't know, 12 times 2. That was F1 and F2, factor 1, factor 2. Can we break this down any further? No, so we'll just transfer that down. Can 12 be broken down any further? Well, we've already seen it can be broken down in two different ways. But let's pick one. Um, 6 times 2. And there we have our next level of kind of broken downness, decomposition, if we want to use a fancy word. Um, now, 2 we know we can't break down any further, so we'll carry that on. This two we can't, because that's a prime we know. Six can, and that's three times two. And now we can't break any of these down any further. These are all primes. So 24 can be broken down into three, two, two, two. So we've just illustrated with an example that process that we've described for breaking down any number into just a, a list of um, primes. And we can't break it down any further because they are primes. Great. So that's part one of the proof done. Now let's look at part two. Actually, here's another example just to illustrate a bigger number. So you've got 720 there and you can break it down as 12 times 60 and then 12 can be broken down into 3 times 4 now 3 is coloured differently because it's prime so that can't break down any further 4 can be 2 and 2 and this, now they can turn our attention to the other branch of this tree 60 that's 6 times 2 times 5 like 6 times 10 as it were so we've just chosen to break it down into 3 here so 5 is prime so that can't break, can't break down any further 2 is prime and 6 is 2, 3. So the list of prime factors is 2, 3, 2, 5, 2, 2, 3. Um, and if we, you know, we, we could have done this as 720 is 24 times 30, or perhaps 60 times um, 6 times 2. There's different ways of doing it. Um, and we will always end up with a list of primes because of the logic of that process. So the question then is, if we arrive at a list of primes, you know, will it be different depending on how we broke down this first number? So the question is, is that list unique to that number? Is it always the same? That's what we're going to prove now. So let's imagine we have a number n that's written down as a list of primes. Now just for the sake of argument, let's say that prime is now listed as a different list of primes just for the sake of argument we're not saying it's correct we're not saying it is different which is going to test this this idea to see if it works or not so n is that list of primes and we're saying for the sake of argument that it's also a different list of primes and actually this list is longer than that list just to make sure that we don't miss the possibility of having a short list and a long list, we can include that in our argument. So, this is how our argument's going to go. We're going to say that if P1 is a factor of N, just like three is a factor of 12, then it must be in that second list too. Because if three is a factor of 12, it's a factor of 12. This, we can't argue, you know. It's got to be somewhere in that second list as well. So if P1 is a factor of N, we can identify, we can mark off where they were in the lists. Um, now, because we haven't said what these numbers, these factors are in the second list, we can just say it's that one. We can kind of match them up. We can say, cross off that one with that one. Um, now, it doesn't matter 
if a prime factor is repeated. So if this was two and that was two and that was two, that doesn't matter. That doesn't affect our argument. Now we can repeat this because we've crossed off P1. We can now think about the second prime factor, which could be five, could be seven, could be something else. If it's the fact, if it's a factor of n, then it must also be a factor of in the second list. So we can cross off another factor from that second list. So we can keep repeating this until all the factors in the first list have been matched up, crossed off, matched up to factors in the second list. Now, because that second list is longer than the first one, there are some left over that we haven't been able to match. We haven't been able to count for them. But if we divide, you know, we've crossed off, we've canceled left and right. We're left with one equals those remaining factors. And that can only mean one thing that they are all, all one. So in some sense, they disappear because they are one. So that means the two lists are equal. And that means there's only one unique way of writing out a number in terms of prime factors. So just to summarize that, any whole number in more than one can be broken down into a list of prime factors. That's statement one, that's really important. That's why it's the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And that list of primes is unique to that number. That's really important too. That's the that's the, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And it's really foundational. Um, it might sound obvious, but it isn't always obvious. Um, but it sits right at the bottom of this pyramid that we've built of mathematics. It's right at the foundation. Um, and it, in some sense, if we think a little bit about it, it's it's a way of saying, well, let's look at an example. So, you know, in the same way that a person has a unique DNA, and if we, you know, have some DNA to analyze and look at, we can match it to one person. It's bidirectional that relationship. It's the same here. If we know a list of prime factors, we know it only belongs to one whole number, and the other way, a whole number can be broken down into prime factors that's unique. It's almost like it's identifying tag. It's unique code. It's DNA in a way. Fantastic. We'll see you next time. Bye.